Today, I'm going to count down the 10 longest reigning monarchs in world history. But in order to make the video more interesting, I've decided to approach the topic a little differently than other such lists. So here's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to limit my list to those who reigned at the royal or imperial rank. So here we're talking about the highest level of monarchy. Kings, queens, emperors, and empresses only or any equivalent title from around the world, such as Sultan or Maharaja. However, my list will not include any dukes, sovereign princes, or anyone who held a title less than a king. Second, I am going to allow monarchs of dependent territories, so long as they reigned at the royal level. So, for example, sometimes there was a local king reigning over a part of the British Empire, even though they were subordinate to the British monarch. In cases such as these, I'm going to allow their reigns to count. Third, I am going to focus on verifiable reigns only, which means that most ancient monarchs were not considered, because in such cases, it's usually very difficult to verify whether or not the dates we have for them are accurate. Fourth, and perhaps most importantly, I am not going to count any years in which a monarch was a child. This actually happens a lot, and in such cases, the child monarch is usually appointed a regent who performs most of the monarch's duties on the child's behalf. So in such cases, I measured either from the official coronation or from the moment a monarch was declared to be an adult and to be reigning entirely on their own. And it's this final criteria which makes my list quite a bit different from the list you'll find on Wikipedia and other such sites. But I would argue that my methodology is actually more accurate in that it takes the very important role of regent more seriously. Okay, let's get to it. Number 10, King Sobuza II of Swaziland. Now, if we were counting childhood reigns, this king would be number one. You see, Sobuza became king when he was just four months old, and he lived to be 83. Therefore, the total length of his reign was 82 years and 254 days. However, up until his coronation at age 22, the royal power in the country was held entirely by one of the queen mothers. In this case, it was not actually his mother, but rather one of his late father's other wives. Interestingly, Swaziland is actually a diarchy, and in addition to a king, there is always a queen mother who reigns alongside the king. However, from Sabuza's birth in 1899 to his coronation in 1922, his father's wife held full power as both the queen mother and as official regent for the underaged king. So according to this list, I've given him an adult reign of 60 years and 8 months. I should also point out that up until 1968, Swaziland was a British protectorate. So if we were counting by years as an independent monarch, his reign would actually be only 14 years. If you want to learn more about him and the diarchy of Swaziland, now called Eswatini, you can check out the video we did about Swazi kings, which I'll link to in the description. Number 9. Emperor Showa of Japan, better known as Hirohito. Hirohito was, of course, the Emperor of Japan during World War II, and he is usually remembered for this fact. However, he went on to live for many decades after the war, and continued to hold the title of Emperor up until his death in 1989, at the age of 87. In Hirohito's case, his entire reign was during his adult years, and the total came out to be 62 years and 13 days. He was followed by his son, Akihito, who abdicated recently after almost 30 years, making Hirohito's grandson, Naruhito, the current emperor. 
If you want to learn more about their family, you can check out the video we made about the succession to the Japanese throne. Number 8. The Qianlong Emperor of China You might be surprised to see this emperor's name instead of the Kangxi Emperor. This is because the Kangxi Emperor is usually said to be the longest reigning emperor in Chinese history. And officially, he was. However, in practical terms, the Qianlong Emperor actually ruled longer. The Qianlong Emperor was the grandson of the Kangxi Emperor. And as he approached the length of his grandfather's reign, out of respect for his grandfather, he decided to formally abdicate so that his grandfather would maintain his status in the history books as the longest reigning emperor. Nice guy, eh? In reality, though, the Qianlong Emperor held on to power for an additional three more years, even though he was technically retired and his son was officially in charge. The Qianlong Emperor died at age 87, after 63 years and four months in power. Of course, if you're interested in Chinese emperors, we've got a video covering the entire family tree, from the Tang Dynasty to the Qing Dynasty. I'll leave all of these links in the description. Number 7. Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom Victoria became queen at age 18, and she died at age 81, for a total reign of 63 years and 7 months. Up until recently, this was a record for a British monarch, but in 2015, her great-great-granddaughter broke that record. I talk a lot about the British monarchy on this channel, so I won't say anything more about Queen Victoria here. But, as you might have guessed, we've got a video about all of the British monarchs. Number 6. Sultan Ibrahim of Johor Johor is currently one of the nine monarchies that exist within Malaysia. But at the time when Ibrahim became Sultan, Johor was part of the British Empire. However, like I said at the beginning on this list, I'm counting dependent monarchs and independent monarchs equally. In this case, that gives Sultan Ibrahim of Johor a total reign length of 63 years and 11 months, just a few more months longer than that of Queen Victoria. Sultan Ibrahim's reign started when he was 21 and came to an end upon his death at age 85. He married six times, was extremely wealthy, even when compared to other monarchs, and actually spent most of his time outside of Johor, in Europe. Number 5. King Louis XIV of France Most lists of the longest reigning monarchs put either Sabuza II at the top, that is, if they count dependent monarchies, or if they don't, they usually put Louis XIV at the top, that is, if they count childhood years. But the thing is, Louis XIV was only four years old when he became king. Obviously, he wasn't ruling at that age. His mother, Anne of Austria, served as his regent until he turned 13, although much of the day-to-day -day running of the country was left to the chief minister, Cardinal Mazarin. So, although he was born in 1638 and became king in 1643, it was in the year 1651, at the age of 13, that he was declared to be of age and was allowed to rule without a regent. This makes the total length of his actual reign just one week shy of 64 years. If you want to learn more about him, and the other monarchs of France, you can check out our video on the complete family tree of French kings. Number 4. Emperor Franz Joseph I of Austria Had the Holy Roman Empire still existed in 1848, Franz Joseph, as head of the House of Habsburg, would have been Holy Roman Emperor. But the Holy Roman Empire ceased to exist in 1806 and instead, much of its former lands became known as the Austrian Empire instead. So, at age 18, upon the abdication of his father, Franz Joseph became the third of only four people to hold the title Emperor of Austria. 
and he was also by far the longest person to hold the title, reigning just 10 days shy of 68 years. It was the assassination of his nephew and heir, Franz Ferdinand, that sparked World War II, and it was two years into that war that he died at age 86. Number three, Aja Pakal I of Palenque. Here we have the only person on this top 10 list from the Americas, and the only person to have lived prior to the modern period. Pakal was a Mayan Aja, an Aja being a type of monarch that ruled over one of the main Mayan city states. He was born all the way back in the year 603 CE and became ruler at age 12. Since we do not know whether or not he had a regent, or when Mayans considered someone to be of age, this one was a bit difficult to determine. However, since Louis XIV was considered to be of age at 13, I decided to go ahead and count the entire reign of Pakal I, in order to be fair. But keep in mind that the other facts about his reign were not difficult to determine. Just because he lived 1,400 years ago, it doesn't mean that we don't have precise records for his birth, reign, and death. The Mayans are famous for their intricate calendar and are known for keeping really good records, so we can confidently say that the length of time between his ascension to the throne and his death at age 80 was 68 years and one month. And yep, we've got a video on his family tree. Number two, Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom. This is the only person on my list that is still reigning today, and therefore the only person that still has a chance to change her ranking. As of February the 6th, 2021, the Queen has already completed an incredible 69 years on the throne, and it is unclear how many more years she might add to that total. She is currently 94 years old and is in good health, so I think there's a very good chance that she will someday soon top the list of the longest reigning adult monarchs of all time but she's not quite there yet. Number one, King Bhumipal of Thailand. Bhumipal passed away just a few short years ago in 2016 at the age of 88. He started his reign at age 19 and therefore reigned for a total of 70 years and 126 days. Currently about one year and a few more months than Queen Elizabeth. If I've done my math correctly, if she is still living, Queen Elizabeth II will pass King Bhumipal's record on May the 2nd, 2022. If you're watching this video on that date and the Queen is still in good health, be sure to leave a champagne emoji in the comments. So there's my list. Let me know what you think. Was it unfair of me to subtract childhood years? Should I have included lower ranking monarchs? Should I have not included dependent monarchs? How would you have done it? Let me know in the comments. And definitely let me know if you can think of someone that I missed. Thanks for watching.